Hey everybody, welcome back to the Monday Q&A show, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and it's also getting ready to head stateside. I'm gonna be at Airsoft Con, actually not Airsoft Con, Airsoft Palooza, I get those two confused. They're both EVIC events. Uh, Airsoft Palooza in Houston, Texas at High Ground Airsoft there. I'm gonna be there on the weekend, it's gonna be the 18th, Saturday, it's gonna be the event. I would love for you to come hang out. I will be there all day, just kind of walking around, chilling, maybe playing a little bit. Uh, be there to answer your questions in person if you guys have something kind of like Monday Q&A that you haven't been able to get answered here on the show or just want to chill and just whatever, hang out. Anyway, I'll be there. Love to see you. There's a ton of other airsofters are going to be there as well. So it's going to be a nice big uh, soiree. Soir Is that even a word? Soiree? Yeah, I think so. Like Jet and, and Leah and all. This be, I'm super excited. It's going to be a fun, fun day. Um, also, real quick, web store. I got patches. I got the new tactical doggos right here, if I can get my hand out of the way. I got two new to add to the pile and then some saying patches here. All these are in the web store. They are for sale, free shipping worldwide. So it doesn't matter where you live, click it, it's free shipping. Free shipping, shipping does take a little bit of time because it's kind of slow boat, you know, it's first class mail. So just give it a, it's usually about two weeks, uh, roughly to your country. Uh, so just kind of be patient, but that's the benefit of free shipping. The downside is a little slow. Anyway, so want to give you guys an update on that. Also, I want to kind of do something a little outside of Airsoft here. This is a project, one of my good friends is working on Monster Fight Club. It's his new business, but he has a ton of experience actually in the tabletop world, and he's dropping some new terrain. I know you guys are going, Jonathan, this is an airsoft. Why are you telling me this? Well, I think there's quite a few of uh, us out here that might be into this world as well. I want to share with it, the Kickstarter is wrapping up right now, and this guy is putting out some really amazing stuff. And I'll tell you, if you know the company and you know the name behind all this, you'll know he brings a ton of history and it's a huge name in the industry. And also, so the best part is he's a huge airsofter. Actually, it's how we ended up meeting and becoming friends. So I just want to bring some attention to this one, Monster Fight Club. Kickstarter is wrapping up right now. It is really a great deal for you tabletop guys. And, and thanks for letting me deviate here and help a friend out on a big project he's working on. Also, this is your show. If you want to get your questions in the comment section or in the show, put them down in the comment section below. I would love to have all your great questions. Anything that's just bugging you that you'd like to get an opinion on or, or a comment about uh, Airsoft in general, put it on down there. Also, a video of the week, if you guys have a channel or love to watch a specific YouTuber, uh, please put those down there as well. I will highlight your channel if I can. Uh, every week I try to pick a YouTuber or a unique video out there, sometimes big channels, but mainly up and coming channels, smaller ones that are doing a great job that maybe you just need a little more eyeballs on them. Anyway, enough about that. Let's dive on into what you're really here for. That's your questions in the Tipman mail call. Well, absolutely right. Q&A, with the current market of airsoft internal designs and upgrades, many still follow the general or slightly modified Tokyo Marui formula. Do you foresee any other pioneering manufacturers emerging? Emerging. I'd love to see another brand divert from team spec and become popular enough to become the norm. So I think this is the problem with this industry. It's kind of like a lot of industries. I mean, if you look at the car industry, things are kind of the same. It took somebody like Tesla to really change the game. Uh, right now, I, I mean, I, I'm not, I, I think there's been some innovation. You look at HPA, for example, but even then they've been trying to fit that in the same space. Um, I think there's uh, some, maybe some innovations in that area. I think GBLS is doing something pretty cool with their hybrid system. There's only so much space you can work with, remember, so the, the, the design can't be too different. But I think HPA has been the big innovation in this area, and I think we've been seeing a lot of that. I know there was supposed to be an electric pneumatic. Um, kind of like a rail, I think it was electro, like it moved the piston with magnets, I, I think. I, I think it was vaporware though. Nothing ever came from it. I forget the name of the company. They were hyping it up for a couple years and then still never delivered on it. I, I think everybody was really hopeful about that to happen. I think the other big thing is, you know, you're gonna look and see more paintball technology move over, like companies like Tipman. Uh, I, I'm just saying that, I mean, obviously they, they do sponsor this, but I'm saying, I think companies like Tipman are doing a good job moving their paintball technology into Airsoft, kind of as a an evolution of the HPA system. And you're seeing things that are uh, being capped off at certain limits, so you can't tune the gun up too hard. Um, which makes it more field friendly. I, I think fields are more welcoming to the guns like, well, you know, you can't make it shoot harder than this. You can't make it have a rate of fire over this number. So fields are like, okay, well, if it's not possible to do that without just incredibly changing the gun, or sometimes it's even locked with, I think the Omega, the new uh, Tipman one, 
um, like locked at the circuit board, um, then they're going to be more welcoming. There's less that worry like that one out of 1,000 players could be like, haha, I'm going to put 60 rounds a second and turn this thing up to, you know, six joules and load it with four sixes and see what I can do. Um, that is, I think, a good thing. But I think the uh, electro-pneumatic thing can be neat. I did see some stuff that Red Wolf was doing, kind of, I think, uh, body systems, like um, wearing armor, adding a video game type element. Uh, they were doing something that was very much like PUBG. Uh, it was pretty cool. You even had med packs to heal yourself. It was actually quite cool. Um, I think all those things are uh, somewhat innovative, but I think the real things maybe once we get to like an electromagnet gun, I think that could be a push. But I know this has been long. We still haven't peeled away from the Tamiya connector, right? Like this is my thing. This is like I always say all the time. I was like, we're talking about innovation in airsoft. We still are still holding on to the Tamiya connector, a connector that's 20 plus years old that's uh, in the RC world has been antiquated. It's just pretty much pushed away because there are far better solutions like T-plugs, like the XT type plugs, uh, the, you know, the Deans, if you want to call them the Deans plugs, uh, which are the T style. Um, there's so many, so many, so many great connectors that I, uh, we haven't even got away from that. So I'm hopeful we're going to see just some incremental changes instead of world-bending changes in this industry. It seems like this industry likes to hold on to the, what's old for so long, but maybe things will change. Hopefully somebody will just jump in and say, hey, we're going to do this. Companies like G&G &G are shipping their guns with Tamiya, with um, not Tamiya connectors, but with Deans and an adapter in the U.S. I like that. I know Titan Power is doing their batteries with both options from the purchase. You can buy it with the, uh, the Dean's connector already on there. You'll have to resolder it yourself. So it's coming along. I know Classic Army for a while did the, the Dean's as well with the adapter. So I'm hoping to see more companies go that route. I'd like to see some of the big guys like Humorex, Elite Force, something like that, get behind it. And I think we'll maybe see this industry start to shift, at least in that area. Komodo Gaming 111 writes, Hey, Jonathan, I was wondering what happened to your VFC Virgo build. You mentioned you were doing it, but never heard much of it. So yeah, I did. I got it. I ran it. I Again, it's a, a build it from scratch. I tried to throw a whole bunch of like tuned parts in it. And I did. I broke my rule, right? Usually I'm like, okay, build something and then start changing one piece at a time. I'm an IT guy by trade. I mean, that's what I used to do is just be like, so you only change one thing at a time, right? And that way you control the variable. Well, I broke my rule. I was like, put it all in and I was like, mm, it was good, but it wasn't great. Now I've dialed all those pieces back, went back to stock, made a few minor upgrades and this thing is, I'm happy with it, right? I'm very happy. So to answer your question, yes, the Virgo, and this is the Virgo with the brushless motor build is coming soon. I'll talk about the positives and you know, there's some weaknesses as well uh, with the, the brushless motor and things like that, things you gotta think about. But uh, overall, I'm gonna kind of do a walkthrough, I think more than a review on the product. Um, it was something I purchased for myself. Uh, it was one of my actual, like, buy it and, and build it. And I wanted to kind of make the showcase video right for you. So stay tuned. I, I think we're going to see that probably in the next few weeks. Probably when I come back from Airsoft Palooza, I'm going to get on top of that. I've got a few more videos I've got to get out before that as well. Some cool stuff. So hang tight on that too. G Gamer writes, hey, John, with all the videos from popular YouTubers that showcase the action packs parts of a Milsim, do you think that it's a bit misleading to new players wanting to try out an op due to the fact that Milsims can be boring at times? And do you think this will hurt the Milsim community in the long run? So yeah, Milsim is, yeah, and I've been absolutely guilty of this with my gameplays. If you guys go back, I used to do a lot of gameplays and I do have gameplays coming up. That is actually my next video. Uh, this the rest of this week before I travel, I will be doing nothing but editing my gameplay from Cape Fear Rebellion in North Carolina. And you know, even with that video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the best part. So I'm gonna ask you this. I can do it a couple ways. I can distill it down to just a short video, you know, like a couple 10 minute videos like everybody else does, show the cool action pack parts of this cool battle I was in, or I can do uncut. I can go full bore, like I think it's about an hour and a half. I mean, I don't know if you guys are like, and you wanna see what it's really like, like the walking, what it takes to go, all the things. I don't know if there's many YouTubers that do that. I might even do both. Might even do the cut version and then put the full uncut one in uh, so you can go through the process and watch this one and a half hour experience of a battle and a mission in a game and get to see all the boring parts that are cut out because it is absolutely true. When myself and all these other guys go play like Jet and all of them, even Novrich, all of us, all of us YouTubers, when we film out at a game, 
we're going to show you the best. We're going to show you the kill streak. We're going to show you that mission that we just destroyed. Or if it's a series, maybe have a couple, then like we, we, we get beat back by the enemy. And then the next one, we, we push on, you know? You just never know how the day is going to play out. But typically, we're going to cut out all the stuff where we're literally guarding uh, an objective for like an hour and a half and nothing happens. You're sitting around, you're eating power bars, you're drinking some water, and you're hoping the enemy comes by because that's your job, right? You gotta guard the objective. What if they send their huge forces over there? You know, somebody has to be there. Um, that is very real <laughs> in Milsim. Uh, people just see the cool experience. Um, the rest of it is the hanging out, but it's not boring when it's you there, I think, uh, because you're gonna be with your squad, with your friends, typically, and people who are like-minded. So. You're, you're usually there having fun, even doing, not, not doing the shooting, right? Not running around and shooting people. You're still having a lot of fun just hanging out. I, I at least I do, right? At least I enjoy those moments. Um, and then you can't go 100% the whole time. You run out of juice. But anyway, uh, I think, yeah, it's a little misleading, but in a way it still shows the good parts of the event. And just like a TV show, you don't want to show all the boring stuff in a movie, you know? They do all this so it's entertaining, and I think that's what we all do as YouTubers, wanna make something entertaining for you. Um, and when you go, I, I will say this, I think it's a lot more exciting, the whole event, because you're gonna still remember those firefights, like those, those magic moments. They're the ones that we usually end up putting in a video for you as a YouTuber. Um, those are the ones that you take with you in your memories and you don't really remember sitting around guarding that bunker or base for like an hour and a half. Like that's a memory lost, right? But the fun battle is kept. So I don't think it's too misleading. I don't think it's going to cause any problems and I think it still promotes the Milsim in the right way. IGZL Captain586 writes, Hey, I'm looking into teching, but I don't want to mess something up with my personal guns and don't want to buy a new one. Should I go for like the Evic Boneyard items? So absolutely yes. If it is your first time teching, do not crack open. If I can give you some good advice, don't crack open a gun you want to use. Don't, especially if you just have one airsoft gun. Don't just pop that one open and start going to work on it because it is a learning experience. I mean, would you tear your car apart, you know, right? Would you go like, hmm, I wanna know how a toaster works. I'm gonna go tear my toaster down to all the bits and then try to put it back together. Um, or a printer, I'm, I'm looking at my printer right in front of me, it's behind the camera here. Um, so, you know, I would never begin to take that apart. I'm like, well, you know, maybe I'll go get a junk one and see how this thing works. And I think that's a perfect solution. Buy some junk. Uh, Evic Boneyard, there's some great deals on the Hop-Up app. Uh, if you guys wanna look for something there, I think that's a fantastic place to look for Boneyard uh, Boneyard products. There are a lot of places, even local fields, like, hey, ask around, like, does anybody have any broken guns they want to sell? Like, I just want to buy one cheap, you know, really cheap. Um, these are all really good solutions, and then you can get in there. And with a little bit of practice, a little bit of work, maybe there's something small wrong with the gun, you know, and you can maybe make a couple quick changes, do some YouTube searches, find the solution, fix it yourself. You could end up with actually a very affordable, brand new, well, brand new used, gun for you to use. So yeah, there's like a lot of positives to this, but for sure, definitely uh, don't start with your good stuff. Don't take something that's fully functional and working and take it apart just to try to see how it works. If it's your first time, I highly recommend getting something like a Boneyard gun. You're on the right track there. And I think uh, a few times, then you're gonna feel comfortable uh, diving into your primary and seeing how to make it better. Well, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one is one I had to stop and, and like call out and say, this is definitely super cool. I want to tell you guys and gals about it um, because it just doesn't have the view count right now. Their first one did. It's almost up to a million. I think it's like nine, almost 900,000 views on it. It's from Evic, if you believe it. And it is their John Wick video. Now this is the six millimeter Parabellum. Uh, it's for uh, kind of their John Wick 3. Uh, they never had a number two. They did John Wick does airsofting and then they skipped the, for John Wick 2 and they went to this one for John Wick 3. Shot extremely well. I have some really good friends of mine that worked on the production crew. Of course, Matt was in the video starring. Uh, a very, get the, I'm not gonna give it away, but there's a familiar face for those of you who've been in airsoft for a very, very, very long time. Uh, and been watching YouTube for quite a while. Very familiar face at the end of this video, which is another reason I wanted to do it. Another good friend of mine. And also some friends of mine that said worked uh, behind the scenes, Ryan and uh, Roger, some guys I know. Uh, Roger uh, works on some major films and I think he directed it as well as Ryan did. I think he was the DP 
on it, uh, director of photography. So uh, Ryan does some amazing film work. He works, uh, of course, in the airsoft world, as well as some other major YouTube channels uh, out there. Does some uh, photography and videography work, I'm sorry, for them. So definitely worth the watch. Definitely, I mean, it is shot. The pacing, the timing, it is absolutely top notch. I think it's like at 13,000 views right now. It's, I can't believe it doesn't have more and I know it will. I know you're gonna watch this back and go, Jonathan, what do you mean 13,000? It's got like a million now. Um, it, once it starts getting traction on YouTube, it's definitely gonna take off, but absolutely top notch video, uh, worth the click and I definitely want to highlight it for you. Also next week, I'll be doing back to your recommendations for Monday Q&A videos or Q&A and videos as well. So make sure to put those down below. Uh, I'll go ahead and have the video ready to rock and roll even though I will be in the States doing the Airsoft Con thing and then back here again. Keep it going. Keep the train running and I'll have some highlights too from Airsoft Con. But anyway, until next time, go out, play some Airsoft, have some fun, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.